Namaste, Guru Gauravani Bhacharya, Nivasisha Sunivari, Pashtatara Satarina, Jai Sri Krishna, Jai Danya, Prabhu Nitananda, Shri Advaita Kadadha, Shri Vasadi Kauravata Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Okay, we are gradually... Slowly but surely, we're going through all these questions. I think there's 140 of them. And at the present moment, where questions are on, on regulative devotional service, as the title says. And we left it last week. We're on question three. I remember this discussion we had of these two questions. I can recall it, yes. And then, so... Kind of a, a common question that we may hear in a class, and then perhaps in one sense, it can have an easy answer. But let's have some ideas from our learned assembly. If someone was to ask you, how can one always think of Krishna? I guess as many answers you could give here. Let's, I'm sure they'll all be right to one degree or another, and then we'll see what. Maharaj says in Sudha Bhakti Chin, Chin, Chintamani. So how come one always think of Krishna and, as we know, never forget him? Easier said than done. It's easy. Associate with the bodies. All the Associate time. Associate with the bodies? Yeah. All Associate. the time. And have yeah. the Sangha like now. You of yeah. The associate with those who are in the practice of thinking of Krishna. Having sanghas like this, where we're specifically speaking about the topic of Krishna consciousness. Yes. When you love somebody, you always think of that person. Yes, Chandravali has been looking at the answers. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's good at her head down. I saw her as well. Yes, I, was, I was studying. I study. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very, you haven't got any good PhD now, have you? Have you? Or you could say, if you give all your money to Krishna, you will definitely be thinking about Krishna. <laughs> that's, it. that's an interesting one. Lavanga If you give all your money to Krishna, you'll definitely be thinking of him. I don't know how you'll be thinking of him. <laughs> yeah, how come, yeah. Lagabanga? How can we think of you giving the money? I don't know. Tell us no, I was just thinking that... Um, and Marish Ford, his father or his grandfather, who was the famous Ford, he said, um, wherever you put your money, that's where your mind will be. Okay. So, so that, I, was not, that, that was not Marish Ford. That was Ambarish's Prabhu's inspiration, one of his inspirations for giving value. Wasn't he the grandfather? Yeah. All right, so that was Ambarish Prabhu's, one of his inspirations for donating millions of pounds to specifically to different projects, but specifically the TOVP. So for him, that was, I guess, in one sense, you can understand if you give that amount of money, it's a big commitment that you're making. So also you want to see that it's used in a very Krishna conscious way. So you want to... Many persons who donate um, money to that um, degree to our movement, they're very con or they're very concerned that it's going to be used in a um, going to be used. What's it word? Going to be responsibly. Yeah, it's going to be used in a responsible way because sometimes it may happen that give money to those who are not so good at managing. <laughs> it may be. Um, yeah, they may not make use of it. So, yeah, that is interesting. So that's Ambarish Prabhu's inspiration. And so, but if anything else? Can can one more. In Bhagavad Gita, it says that I saw Ham Pasukuntaya, I mean, drinking water, looking at the sun, looking at the moon, doing anything, eating prasad, <laughs> yeah, yeah, looking at the reading, right. reading the words, everything comes from. 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, in other words, looking at um, Krishna's uh, Vibhuti's 
which are represented in the material world. So in that sense, the material world can be a udipan, an inspiration to think of Krishna. Raswa hamsa kuntaya. I'm in the taste of water, I'm in the light of the sun, the moon, etc. Yeah, so in many ways, but I think the essence or the most um, natural way is to be absorbed, is to, um, with the eyes, salve with the tinge of love. Any, any, anyone know that verse from the Brahma Samhita? I don't know it. Yeah, very nice. That's it. Yeah, so when one's eyes are tinged with the salve of love. In one place, Srila Prabhupada translate that, translates that as when the eyes are tinged with the salve of, of devotional service. In fact, I've just got to do some muting here. Yeah, if you're not speaking, best if you can be on mute. And of course, if you want to speak, please just unmute yourself. That way, no disturbances. What uh, we're when we're doing services, because say you're cooking, dressing, washing, cleaning, whatever, then you're thinking because you're doing it for Krishna. Say that again. Sorry, I was muting people. It said it again. When you're doing devotional service, cooking, dressing, cleaning. <coughs> Then you kind of meditate, even when you're showing Krishna's outfits. You, you know. Yeah, you're doing service and distributing books, making garlands, yeah, looking you, for Krishna. Yeah, going on books, you're doing it for Krishna, you know. Yeah, that's the idea. So, yeah, these are right answers. And uh, Maharaj, interestingly, he, he mentions the first aspect, which Mother Chandravali brought out. Um, it's natural if you have a relationship of love to think of the beloved. Yeah. But then Maharaj, uh, brings up um, how 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 practicing devotees can fix our minds on Krishna. So then he refers to the um, to, of devotion, the bhakti resmita sindhu. But Rupa Goswami specifically gives sixty four um, what's called prominent rules of devotional service. How to engage as senses in Krishna's service. So then we follow that, bowing down before Krishna, ringing the bell when he comes to the temple room, wearing the garlands that come from the Lord, singing for the Lord's dance, singing and dancing for the Lord's pleasure, other ones attending festivals of the Lord, um, hearing Shima Bhagavatam. He gives like 64 rules to follow. Yeah. We're trying. Yeah. Then he mentions the months of 64, as, as we know, that some of them are for engaging a body, like paying obeisances, some of the senses, like offering prayers, shravanam, uh, vandanam, and some for the mind, smadanam. Yeah. So that's how a regulative devotee can help to remember, can actually remember Krishna by following these, these different activities that's given in the nectar devotion therefore we have a morning program and you may have your own um worship at home yeah where you're worshiping your deity etc yeah, so that's how we can think of krishna we, Prabhupada said one time we should think of krishna 26 hours a day 26 yeah. hours a day okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> So can, okay, how to do that? <laughs> but Muli, probably even like when you're at home, you're listening to the chanting, you're listening to the class while you're working at home, doing your housework. So that is as well, isn't it? So, you know, yeah. focusing, trying to focus our ourselves to yeah. his uh, lotus feet. The house belongs to Krishna. If we have the Lord at home, then the house belongs to him. So sometimes mm -hmm. when I, 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 I try and think of that, when I clean this ashram here, that I'm in, when I'm cleaning, I try to think, yes, yeah, it, it is it's not my ashram. It's not my, it's not mine. It actually mm. belongs to Krishna. That, that, and, and also gives me some inspiration to clean it. <laughs> Always. Everything belongs to him anyway. So. Yeah. So that's a nice, yeah. So, all right. So what we can do, we 
Oh, I, I highlight them after. Okay, so that is nice. And if we've done well there, how can we always think of Krishna? But number four, if Nam Sankirtan is the best of all devotional processes, why is hearing frequently emphasized as the most important limb of devotional service? So Nam Sankirtan means um, Shravanam. No, yeah, no, Kirtanam. But we always hear about that hearing is very much emphasized as as the important limb. So we gather, so you, you understood, so the most important um, for, for Kali Yuga, the Yuga Dharma is to chant the holy name. But then we hear the most important limb of devotion is hearing. So it seems to be a bit of a contradiction here. Uh, Say if someone asks you that question, how are you going to answer? Say you're giving class and someone sticks their hand up. Can I say something, Prabhu? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, when you hear, uh, we know whom you are glorifying. Otherwise, uh, you know, hearing may gives you attachment. Hearing make you understand who is this personality and why we should... Uh, surrender to him if you don't hear otherwise uh, there you can't make that connection when you do chopper yeah very good very good so without hearing how are you going to chant basically yeah without hearing about krishna is this in essence that's what you're saying is it Nimai Mata? without hearing yeah uh, Yes, we, okay, at the beginning we can start chanting, but if you really want to carry on chanting, you should start hearing. Yeah, you should, you should hear about how beautiful Krishna he is, how wonderful he is, yeah. pastimes, hear about true. philosophy, yeah. then he will be inspired to chant. Yeah. And his glory is, otherwise, oh, who is he? We don't know him, okay, we are just chanting. Who is he? What can he do? How is he in our life? We have to know about him his instructions everything yeah yeah very good Lord Bravo, can i ask something please yes please yeah is it not, is it not uh, yeah, yeah, um, unfortunately your voice has come through a tube you, is it better now you switch off your video, you would feel better then. Is it better now? Yeah, better? Yeah. now we can hear. Okay, okay. So, if the holy name is non different than Krishna, then the Srimad Bhagavatam is non different than Krishna. When we read it's Srimad Bhagavatam, it's like we are chanting the holy name in a way or another because it's not different than Krishna. Then right. the hearing is not really because it's the question, it is that. Why it's so important, Sankirtan? You have to hear Shraddha. Then yeah. hearing, it's not different than chanting. Yeah, it's right. Because the... we read the Srimad Bhagavatam, which goes directly to the heart, which is exactly like we are chanting the holy name. So it's the same, but different. It's like a paradox, but it's the same, no? Yeah, it's very nice, quite esoteric um, answer there. Yeah, and ultimately hearing and chanting is ultimately on the absolute platform if you're hearing about krishna then you're within your interesting me husband if you're hearing about krishna then ideally you're you know you're remembering about him in your heart and vice versa interesting yeah um marge mentions here it is true that reveal scriptures in their commentaries they make these statements about the importance of Hearing, but it's always goes goes along with glorifying Sankirtan as the best limb of devotion. Yeah. Much then Prabhupada to quote from Prabhupada here. These are nine processes of devotional service, of which Shravana hearing is most important. Without hearing, nobody can understand the science of God. So, in other words, um, it's emphasized Nam Sankatan um, above or is emphasizes to being the yuga for the 
age and but it's and hearing let me get this right. so hearing is emphasized but it should always be done food with and accompanied by the process of nam sankirtan yeah all right so let's go on what about you know like um, hearing oh. like when you're listening to the classes for knowledge because then that can be used in krishna conscious yeah that's it hearing we're hearing for yeah we're hearing for yes. you know we have a purpose in hearing to purify our heart and also to share yeah what we, Yeah, even oh, yeah. in Molly Prabhu, you drive and you hear all the kids and and classes as well. So that yeah, yeah, a lot well. of drive, drive to and from the temples. That's a good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really nice driving in the morning, and then. Oh, uh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, in the morning, it's really lovely. Nobody's around, and you go, you get singing all away. All clear to drive. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, <laughs> and we have so many um. Today, uh, we have so many um, gadgets and so many things we can help to increase the amount of time that we hear. You know, mm. we can, on the tube we can have uh, i AirPods or whatever you call it. Think so much. All right, so let's um, go here. This one's quite. This one's relatively. I think. I think it might be an easy question to answer. Why did the Acharya stress chanting Hare Krishna in in public this question is asked um to haridas tako in the harinam chintamani why why lord chitanya so that's the question why is there can so I, much can i ask something about this yes it's if we go in the public and let's say the public uh, they are not always the most nice they don't receive it maybe nice and they make yeah. offenses even those offenses which they make they can help them and put them on the on the path of devotional service in the future because they made the offense towards you and the uh, vaishnava have been so merciful they will kind they will grant them in a way entry and they will purify themselves too because right. of that Well, it depends. Uh, depends on what you mean specifically by an offense. I mean, if they, if if they corporally or, or if if they physically attack devotees, then the nature of that offense will nullify any chances they've got <laughs> of actually making any advance. I don't mean aggressive. I mean like, yeah. look at this so people. Who... Yeah. So 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 that's not offensive. That's called a uh, nama bus. They're not um. And um, step first, um, Sanket Yabri Hashimba, Stolva Helam Eva, but the Kunda Namukahano, a Sheshak Nam, Vidam Vidu. This is a verse that comes up in the sixth canto of Shimma Bhagavatam in regards to Ajimil, who chanted at the stage of Namabas. We have three stages Namaparat, Namabas, and Sudanam. So, mainly people who ridicule us on the street. Or imitate the chanting, that um, that's not offensive. They're just um, that's called um, nama bas. They're just innocently imitating devotees. So that will give them one that, as as we read in the Har Harinam Chitamani, that would actually give them liberation. That's a credit. Yeah. So there, you have to make a distinction between offensive and uh, nama and. Uh, Uh, offense i don't mean to be hit or to be beaten up but by saying ah oh, look at this orange people they are walking and singing again <laughs> in the name they don't yeah. know when they say it but it can be offensive from their side not knowing what they do yeah that's kind of innocent curiosity they're kind of having a joke and who's these aries and all that as soon as they say harry then they <laughs> and that's, now that's you know that's dead that's to their eternal benefit Yeah, so, but I'm just going to highlight that point. If someone is abusive to devotees, throws beer at them, swears at them, or attacks them, um, then that will be that will be an impediment to their spiritual life. 
as all the holy name is very merciful, if this holy name is not merciful to, to those who deride or attack the devotees of the Lord. Although there is stories, I heard the other day of stories in one class in the manner, or no, actually it was during breakfast, where a devotee's first contact with um, devotees was actually violently attacking the Harinam. <laughs> kicking the devotees or throwing things at them, then, then they became a devotee. So that's the causeless mercy of the devotees who, who do not take offences to those who are, are offending them. But, uh, so, anyways, you, yeah. Will you probably, can I just say something? Um, yes. What happened, I mean, even I remember listening to a class in Mana and uh, this uh, devotee or what, he just got up <laughs> And he started speaking about uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he was he was oh. kept out. Oh my uh, God! He's like, yeah, I, I couldn't believe there. it. Yeah. I, 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 I was there. Well, I was. I was yeah. We couldn't hear very well. We couldn't know. He said, "I'm an incarnation of Mahaprabhu." That's it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was in that class, and I was sitting right next to him. Yeah, I saw school. you. Yeah, well, that's what yeah. I was asking you. So what happens there? Well, he didn't directly blaspheme any devotees. He's just yeah. an illusion. So yeah. he didn't say, use people who are like this, use people, you know, he didn't verbally abuse devotees. He's just, you know, he's, he's in complete illusion. Yeah. yeah, that was a shame because I was watching him and he was walking, coming, he was walking from Watford every day and coming okay. in from Mongolati. Mm -hmm. And he seemed to break, seemed, I was watching him with, Interest I often do when new devotees I see them and I see how they appreciate him. And he was very good chanting japa and um, listening nicely in classes, even asking some interesting questions. Um, but actually, um, unbeknown to me, there was some issues that happened mm. uh, previously and yet to be spoken to. So, mm -hmm. and yeah, so that so that went live before. Um, my GoPro of a prayer but had the sense to unplug him from the microphone. Yeah, I saw him getting but, up. Yeah, that's yeah, but there you go. But there's, I mean, what he said or what he was saying, he was indicating that he is God. Is and it, actually, yeah. actually, that might have been, actually, that probably could have been offensive because he was saying it in front of the deities. Although he was saying he's the next incarnation of Lord Chaitanya. That's it, yeah. I remember I heard him saying that. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Anyway, that is all of our disease. We actually think we're God's subtle or gross, but he's... Anyway, mm -hmm. so yeah, that might have been on the border where one is um, propounding to be the supreme. God. So in, actually in, in, in front of the deities. But ultimately, that's up to, for Krishna to judge accordingly. Mm. You know, we cannot fully understand what's going on within this person's heart and, and i think he will come back isn't it Prabhu? because he was doing good japa and then once he uh he was um, trying to good. recite the class also the verse he was really talk and asking good questions continuously anyway he when he here won't be coming back soon because he's not allowed to come back <laughs> At least for some time, yes, stay away. Prabhu, another thing, things, I was thinking to say something for number five. I thought... Um, yeah, let's try and answer five. We haven't answered it yet. Uh, it's a blessing in disguise. That's why. Uh, we, we yeah. don't, that's one word I can say. Let's, I let's, get more, let's get more specific. There is a more of a well-known answer to this one. Prabhu, it's to benefit the uh, public, really. Yeah, this is it. Anupama yeah. has it. And yeah. When we chant Japa, we just benefiting ourselves. And when we do it Hari Nam, we're benef we're benefiting many people. When we go on the street, for example, and we chant out aloud, Let's everyone's see. hearing the holy name. So that's why um, it's encouraged by our charyas. Yeah, our acharyas. There's some sampradayas or Vaishnava or some, I don't know if they're completely Vaishnava, but some people in India say 
you shouldn't chant the holy name out loud. It should be done personally in Japa only. But we don't agree with that. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Yeah, so we just you just benefit more people. So that's why the charis um, emphasize it. So number six, why do misconceptions and improper practices exist in a perfect process? Well, it's probably generate some discussion. You because, find yeah, I was going to say because the people practicing it are not perfect. Yeah. I mean, the person is perfect, um, coming down through like parampara, but as you know, practicing, we're not perfect. Yeah. So we will have misconceptions and, and yeah. proper practices. Yeah, we are the modes of nature and we are practicing the perfect process to become perfect, not that we are perfect and practicing. Yeah, we, are, we are in the shower trying to become clean. Yeah. So, so we get into the shower in the impure state. We have, yeah. Like an elephant. What do you mean, Mia? Oh. Like an elephant. No. <laughs> Huh? We are going in the water, we wash ourselves, but then we still go in fire and then we get dirty. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Konja, konja Shotavat, that example is given in the Bhagavatam. Konja Shotavat. Did I hear someone else there? Chandravali, did you say something? Or? I was thinking, I, I, I get um, lots of sometimes questions like, well, why did he do this, he did this, he did that, whatever. And I always use this example, that the process is perfect, but because we are yeah. not perfect, so then we see, we have four defects, so we then see things in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah as well, have you seen that in our life? Like, um, uh, before you would see something, before okay. you see something, and then uh, as you progress slowly, a little bit, you see the same thing in a different light, or um, understand it in a different light, or work in a different way. Yeah, is that right? You know? Yeah, Marge mentions that actually, it's quite it's a natural consequence of trying to practice a pure science you know as Lavanga Latika mentioned well, we are imperfect so we're coming from an imperfect place so we're so we're trying to practice a perfect process so there's going to be some friction <laughs> if you put something impure next to something pure it's only natural there's going to be some um, effervescence. <laughs> it's going to be some, you know, it's going to be some friction. So it's not natural. It, is, it, it, it doesn't indicate that the process is wrong. It, it actually indicates that the process is right and it's working because it's bringing these things up and it's, people are getting. Is to it... get purified, you have to, well, different levels of purification, but perhaps but, but one level is that um, to get purified, the uh, impure things have to come out onto the surface of the heart and the mind and and and, and it may escape into the uh, into what you say and what you do it probably is. yes shout a mother yeah i i just thinking is it because of our false ego that it, our mind doesn't allow us to accept the perfect process easily because yeah. unless, unless we tame our uh, wild mind it will be difficult to accept the perfect process yeah, that's uh, the transient false ego, as we've been reading in uh, Sankabu Komodi. That, in one sense, that sums up everything about our, about our conditioning. And false ego is the biggest, um, what is it? It, it, it's the biggest part, or it's the biggest thing that the material worlds are covered by. False ego. Yeah, so that's correct, the yeah, false ego. So Marge mentions that just yeah, misconceptions arise from ignorance and faithfulness. Improper practice from ulterior motive for personal gain or prestige. Thus, as Krishna consciousness continues to spread throughout the world, 
so will in so will impediments to genuine devotion. <laughs> so as it spreads, we're going to see. We're going to see. Um, there's one quote. Sometimes my guru Maharaj often he's said more than once. I forget who it's from, but he quotes that as the um, as the Sangatan movement spreads throughout the world, there will be a massive spreading of Sahajism as well at the same time. You know, persons are going to be take it cheaply. It's just a natural, unfortunately. Um, it's inevitable. If you're sowing, you know, if we're spreading, you know, we're spreading Krishna consciousness, it's like sowing uh, flower seeds. So at the same time, weeds are going to grow as well. You know, as the Sangatar movement spreads different continents and different communities, there's going to be persons just like in India, exactly the same. You've got your Sahajas there, you know. So we see this practically. Some persons really taken to Kirtan, but um, they're not taken to the regulative principles. They have no intention to. They're just chanting Krishna's holy name for musical entertainment or some form of pseudo-spirituality. But when it comes to the regulative principles, etc., and the life of a sadhaka, they're not really interested. So that's called sahaja. Yeah. But at least they're chanting the holy name, I guess. All right? Yeah. So that's why misconceptions, it's natural. <laughs> it sounds strange to say that. Misconception natural. But yeah. Natural. Yeah. I have a question, Prabhu, there. Yes. Uh, this, uh, since they are um, anyway chanting the holy name, so one day they will they will realize their mistake. Is it right, Prabhu? Very soon. Depends on the, 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 well, it very much depends on the individual. And it, 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 it very much depends on their development of the understanding of uh, what they're doing. It may become um, their misconceptions may become more solidified if there's no, if, for instance, another shout I mentioned false ego. So it may do it, may not. It's not automatically that everyone, like every person who's, for instance, we're terming here as a sahaja, are going to realize and take to the to a kind of a devotional lifestyle is not no, they may continue like that for their whole lives Even unless they really devoted their their only chance if they perhaps read one of Prabhupada's books or they get the association of devotees they get the association of a serious practitioner then there's a chance but without that there's not much chance mm. like for example like Radhanath Maharaj goes to and he he preaches at these yoga places in the Himalayas and these yogis are there, Western yogis. So there they're meeting a, a pure hearted Vaishnava, a pure soul. So they're going to be attracted to him because of his purity. And being attracted to him means they're going to be attracted to what he does and his practice. So there's a chance there if they come across the pure devotees of Lord Chaitanya. Without that, they can go on lifetimes, you know, millions of lifetimes chanting the holy name, at the same time engaging in sinful activities. Right. So number three, number seven. Uh, time check. Wow, time flies. So this one's a bit technical. I try and explain it as best I can so we understand. Um, why did Takwa Bhakti Vinod? Amalgamate the first four, four stages of pure devotional service into one. So, what's the, you know, this verse starting Ado Shraddha? What's the first four stages? First one is faith, and the other one is? Sadhu Sangha. Sangha. Yeah, but, next one is? Bhajan Kriya. Bhajan, next one is? Anathanivriti. Ruchi. Ruchi, is that right? Yeah, Anathanivriti. No, fourth one is Anathanivriti. Yeah, fourth one is Anathanivriti. So, so, he, so he amalgamated these four in his explanation of the stages of devotion. He does not 
speak of them separately. He speaks of them. Let me, uh, so, so he so he amalgamated them into one. So why did he do that? Any you have to go back to uh, mid nineteenth century India, yeah. which is when Bhaktivinoda Thakur was preaching. But what I was thinking to say, uh, oh, sorry, somebody else is speaking. Actually, yeah. I was thinking, I was just thinking to like um, get people's desires. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, I think that's kind of wrong direction. It's, just, it's a bit of a difficult one to get. Uh, yeah. Is that because people were uh, different in that age? Yes, Miha is going in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. People were in was... a different age, and they, they were acting uh, naturally. It was natural to follow the, let's say, all those regular yeah. principles yes, and everything. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is going in the right direction. Mabula is going to say something. Oh, similar. I was just going to say um, because he was trying to clean up the uh, image of like Bhakti because it had gotten a bad reputation. Yeah, um, there was some. Persons like that, definitely. But on the whole, um, people kind of faithful in them, like religious thing. They want. Those yeah, things. that's it. So and as more like Ramayana and things like that, they would be listening. I was yeah. thinking, Prabhu, these four stages are really connected. Those days, but uh, because I, until Anathanivati, it's and then only the uh, actual real pure devotion will come. After cleaning yeah. up, yeah. So Marge mentions that he mentions that at the time, as I mentioned, mid nineteenth century India. Although um, Indian aristocracy had kind of been overshadowed and sold out to the British way of, you know, the British so-called British culture, yeah, the British way of life. Still, the Vedic culture was very was quite strong actually, compared definitely to what it is now. Actually, the Vedic culture survived thousands of years of foreign rule. <laughs> it was still quite strong. The, the uh, Vedic practices in village life and the culture and the family and the, the culture of the, the relationship between husband and wife and the children, etc., and their relationship to the priests and the Brahmins. It was quite strong in the respect they would give and their way of life as well. Naturally, most people were could say most, not all, most were uh, vegetarians, most were believed in God and were pious. Um, then Marge mentions that the um, excesses of the Victorian era, you know, the Victorian era, the excesses which were there, compared to today, were pretty prudish. You understand? Prudish were pretty... Um, Quite innocent, actually. Yeah. So, you know, I'll just read from you. So, then, then the Thakur, he may have seen that his Indian readers of the early 19th century, basically, there's more or less freed from bad habits. So, the first stage of preaching to them was Nishta, take up devotional service. Yeah. But today, the biggest obstacle well, the big obstacle for all of us to one degree or another is freeing ourselves from bad habits and arts and everity and to control the mind and senses. That wasn't a big preaching need at that time. There was, imagine, there was no internet. <laughs> so, there was no, for, 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 for what's it called, qualification of, you know, we don't mention it even, pornography like it is now. You know, compared to then, there was relatively uh, one to one degree or another. It's quite a pious life, but now it's a lot different. Yeah, so you know, devotees experience trying to control the mind and senses, like trying to climb Mount Everest. <laughs> it's a big endeavor. So therefore, although Bhaktivinoda didn't specifically mention it, Prabhupada did. And it's there anyway, it's there when Rupa Goswami did. 
And so Prabha picked up on that and, and he didn't go along with Bhagnod Thakur's uh, merging those four into one. He actually, no, it's a, it is a stage which we have to control our mind and senses. It's a massive issue, a massive issue for those who want to take up Krishna consciousness. Where previously, it wasn't in the early 19th century, it was relatively easier. One's mind and senses generally moved within the realms of piety, not to the level of degradation today's youths are exposed to. We can't, we don't know. You know yeah. it's can I say something, Muli Prabhu? You can, yeah. Please. Is that because in the past everyone was, let's say, working on the higher selves because now in this age now in this age we are all let's say most of the society is just about sex and enjoyment so they work more on the lower self let's say animalic simply at that time it was more high they were all on the top even the non-pious they were pious and now even the pious are very struggling because they've been deteriorated by generation and generations which they come from down to go back up yeah, yeah. that's basically yeah. like even now ourselves in if we look back 10 20 30 years when we was young and we think of the things that we used to perhaps get you know um, wrongly absorbed in i mean compared to now we had it i mean now we were i'm not going to open up this is a big discussion but um, and it's, anyway, now the youth, you know, we had fashions when uh, we was young. We used to dress in certain clothes and certain fashions. But the fashion now amongst a lot of young people is to have your sex changed. <laughs> so it's got, got to that incredibly degraded. Um, so therefore, so Bhagnod Dukor wasn't preaching to... Um, yeah, yeah. I was asked a question the other day at the at the Bhagavad Samana, They had sixteen young men who were monks for seven days, seven day monk thing. It's good, sixteen young men. Yeah, and I was doing questions and answers one day with them, and of course the issue of gender came up. So you have to be careful how you answer these questions. Hmm. Question was if uh, if a uh, if a woman has a sex change, she becomes a man, can she live in a Brahmachari ashram? <laughs> so, anyway, I'm not going to open up to that discussion. Yeah, even, uh, probably even this, this uh, guy, oh, okay. as well. <laughs> Sorry? So I don't, you know, there's one guy, I think he's tall, I don't know, Tom, he, was, he dresses up, I yeah. see him, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so, what. Yeah, so, so without true. going down that path too much, so this is why um amalgamated to the right, first four mm. stages, but Prabhupada didn't. Yeah, we, we have to control our mind and senses. And it's an issue. All right, that goes some regulative devotion time check. 6.50, great, 10 minutes left. So now we move on to questions regarding spontaneous devotion. Okay. So, which, isn't it, we speak... Maharaj puts a lot of, um, he writes about this quite a lot, isn't it? Spontaneous devotion. So here's a question then on, on this subject. Um, why are so few devotees initially qualified for spontaneous devotion? Because they are not purified yet. Not purified, that's correct. I would say that's correct, not purified. But um, there's another answer we're looking for here. What do you need? Um, determination. Uh, determine, getting closer, yeah, getting warmer. Uh-huh. How else could we? Faith, faith word, is not strong. Faith. Strong faith, yeah. You have to have a greed. Want to want to really, yeah. Yourself want to really want it. You know, want to really get out, get love of Krishna. You know. Yeah. Did you look at that answer, Mother? Because you got it spot no, on. I'm thinking. I'm thinking like. 
Uh, uh, which, whichever, like Mar uh, Kadamakana Maharaj was saying, like, oh, I want to come back, you know. So we really got to get to that stage when we really develop yeah. the for Krishna. Yeah. That it doesn't yeah. matter whether we're here, there, anywhere we are, but we're so conscious of Krishna that um, it doesn't, nothing matters, you know. Yeah, so it's, quite yeah. it's quite simple. It's quite simple. That, 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 you know, when if we are in that kind of condition, in that kind and of Muli Prabhu as well, and when we are just had yeah. enough with this material, not interested in anything else, but just our focus is Krishna, constant, you know. Yeah, that's so. More or less, what was what, what that, Sunit is that, is saying is the same as what Mother Chandravali is saying. I think in mm. basically greed, um, we we can the qualification for for spontaneous devotion is quite simple. You actually want it. If you don't want it, you're not going to get it. If you want it, if you've got greed for it, then you're going that direction. If you're not, you aren't. Quite simple. And how do we get greed for it? It's another subject. Then we have to hear about it. We have to hear about Krishna's pastimes and become attracted to it. It's quite Maybe simple. Can I, uh, yeah. can I just say that if it gets not interested, why do you go in this path? Why is that then? Because obviously, you know, going in this path it must be because we are interested and we won't, you know, we are hankering for it as well. Yeah, I'm just saying, but then, but then it has to be it has to be we have to be quite attentive to to the process that has been given us, and to attentively study Shula Prabhupada's books, and then it will become quite if we, if we take to a serious study, or part to the science of devotion that Prabhupada has given us, then we will conclude, we will conclude that the the need is you know we have to and that's what this whole uh, Sankhya Kamudi is about. That the essence of everything ultimately is that we want to be servants of Krishna and next devotion says the specific servants we want to be of Krishna we don't want to be servants of uh, Vishnu we don't want to be servants of Narayan we don't want to be servants of um, Lord Ram we want to be servants of uh, Radha and Krishna yeah, that that is the direction of Gaudiya Vaishnava so Mm. Yeah, so that's the answer to that. So as we, if we if we really apply it, if we really understand the philosophy, then then that's where it should naturally take us. But if we're not so keen, if we don't hear so much, we don't we we don't you know we're just doing our devotional activities and we've got a pious life. And it's so good, it's okay. You know, this is the whole study we're doing, isn't it? Which we're doing, which Maharaj is helping us to navigate this path. So that's why why are so few devotees initially uh, I think I spoke this wrong here. Why are so devotees initially unqualified? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Actually, um, let me put that. That makes more sense. <laughs> unqualified for do because they don't have the greed. Yeah, it's qualified because it's there's qualified. a few devotees qualified. qualified. Oh yeah, it's qualified. It's qualified. Yeah. yeah. I was, Why are so few devotees initially remember, qualified? What's that word? Right. What's that word? Dridvata? Dridvata? Like? Dridvata, determination. Determination. Yeah, yeah Dridvata. One pointed. Really always go about that word. Yeah, one pointed. One pointed, yeah. Dridvata. Ekaha. You yeah. need to really be heavy with those kinds uh, of things. Sometimes a lot. If the devotees becomes very comfortable in their situations, then uh, we become complacent. We should yeah. not be comfortable in. Uh, okay, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. We should always strive. Oh, I want to do better. Oh, I want to do more. Yeah, yeah that's basically that's what we should be. We should be moving. Devotional yeah. service is a moving process. We should be moving. Yeah, and different sun couples. That's the whole sun couple Moody. Yeah. All right. Let's. What's the time check? Four minutes. Let's see if we can get make some ground on this question as well. What is the proper meditation for a spontaneous devotee who has not reached the dawn of perfection? So the dawn of perfection is Baba. So perhaps, perhaps this one I'll just explain. It might be difficult to. Um, 
Yeah, and then I was looking at this. Um, so, yeah. Meditating on Lotus Feet of the Lord. That's it, yeah. Um, Modi Prabhu. Yes, go. Is it not the more they will follow instruction from the bodies and let's say collaborate with them in the beginning? Yeah, going in another direction here. Let me just read here, be more clear. Um, so the bona fide um, meditation. Um, your voice has gone down the tube again. You can't hear. The bona fide meditation is to remember the activities of the Rajrasis. So that's the um, yeah, that's the meditation. Um, to who one has become attracted. So this is uh, Raghunuga Sadhana, yeah. And then I said, for instance, if those ones be attracted to the Sakiras, um, may meditate upon Shidam and his features, how he jokes and plays with Krishna, etc. And devotees attracted to so as Rupa Manjari, the Siddha Rupa of Rupa Goswami, they meditate. So you basically you meditate. That's so the meditation for spontaneous devotee is to meditate upon the spiritual world, meditate upon the gopis. That's their, that's what they meditate upon. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that's basically the meditation for spontaneous devotees. Meditate. And let me sneak in this question as well. Uh, we've got two minutes. Let's make the most. How do devotees know which Ras, which Raj Rasi to follow? Well, that's easy. Go on. Depends on the mood. We just take the mood of the. Mm. Is yeah, but how do you know which one? You need to observe them. Mm. Yeah, but how do you know which one to serve? You which need to observe to them. Observe, observe. No. All right, so Listen you read them. about them. So you read about them. Read about them. Mm. I think yeah, so quite you find the mood. I think when you perform... Sorry, so, so, so it's a bit like... Yeah, go on. No, you so I kick that and everyone off. Uh, so some say it's a bit like shopping. You go down it's the like supermarket to school. And, like... and you check out Sakiras, you check out what's going on there. <laughs> then you <laughs> check out it's... go see what's yeah. going on. It's Thank like you. you go to school and when you go to school, you just learn the basic and then from the basic, you will see which branch you are more inclined. What do you like more to, how do you like? Yeah. I like that, Mihai, because you know when you're at school, then you think, oh, do I need to do science? Do I need engineering? Oh, to shall I become a doctor? Oh, this, this, I heard Mother Shouda. She can. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I just want to say, uh, you get the inspiration from within. This is what the verse is: "The So yeah. the God comes from the uh, from the super soul eventually, like we see, like the spiritual master. Mm. Yeah, another shout has gone in the right direction. I think you also hinted, I was also hinted about that as well. That I actually, couldn't hear, I couldn't hear her. What did she say? Muli Prabhu can you? She said it's, it's something that is revealed within. And she was quoting Te Samsatata Yuktanam Pajatam Pritikurvakam. So, in other words, Marj mentions the first sentence, mentions actually the truth is that devotees mm. are at this stage of qualification, they don't have to ask this question. They don't ask it. It's, it just comes naturally. Is They're not going to the ask. Day, yeah? It's not, well, eventually, yeah. It's not like, Marge mentions, it's not like, um, it's not something that's whimsically adopted. So they don't ask these questions. If, if you, I remember Marge was speaking this, that if you ask that question, it means you're not qualified. Mm. <laughs> you don't have to ask it, as Sharon was saying. And yes, I think as you get mature as well, is it right? Yeah. Mature, mature. Yeah. Your, and then your... the question, then the question we want that then you will, of course, then there will be um, 
conversation with suitably advanced devotees to confirm your meditation or your attraction like that all right yeah, yeah, so that's interesting you. all right perhaps we'll stop there for today and uh, tomorrow we'll be on harinam chintamani is that correct uh, last yeah. week we missed please forgive that and so we'll get back on track for that tomorrow so thank you everyone i hope this was of interest and um some interesting perhaps you remember some things take it away with you and be inspired by what we hear heard and chanted about today so thank you everyone for everyone for joining us and look forward to being with you tomorrow for our harinam chintamani katal thank okay. you thank you uh, Muli Prabhu. he's uh, great Muli uh, Prabhu. Ki